Welcome to the Hamburg Center, inside the Hamburg Center. It's a beautiful day here in Halifax on the campus of St. Mary's University. It's the final. It's what we've been waiting for. It's the matchup we anticipated. It's the matchup everybody's been looking for. It's the championship game of the MWBA, the chase for the Legacy Cup. It will come to an end this afternoon. It's the Halifax Thunder and the Halifax Hornets. They will tangle here at the Holmberg Center. Good afternoon, everyone, alongside Taja McKenna, Vince Williams on hand, and Taja. This matchup has been highly anticipated. It's matchup number three between these two teams. The Thunder, they got the Hornets twice in the regular season. Yep. The third one is always the one the hardest one to win and it's for all the marbles yeah you know it i mean i've had lots of coaches tell me it's tough it's tough to beat a team three times in a row we know that the halifax hornets when they had their first matchup at msvu played the thunder i think they lost by about 12 or 14 and then hannah brown came into the mix i think maddie monroe those were two players they were missing didn't make the impact we were hoping we would see but you know what different game different vibe kind of a hometown feel for both teams and everyone's excited for it. Lots of stars on both of these teams at the U Sports level, the CCAA professional level. They are loaded squads. The Thunder, 11 and 0, 10 and 0 in the regular season. The Hornets, 8 and 2 in the regular season, got it done last night in a semifinal win over the Fredericton Freeze, 66 to 60. On the other side, the Thunder, relatively easy. They took care of the Windsor Edge. They clamped them defensively, beat them 72 to 58. So one team, well rested, only had to play one game. The other team had to play three. This will be their third. So the war of attrition will be part of this outcome. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? The Thunder were missing Jada Vino and Vanessa Pickard last night's game as well. So uh, they just bring in uh, more, more players and more weapons on the court, right? So I'm really excited for the matchup. I think the Hornets are a little bit more prepared for this game. We'll see how they play. So we'll send it down to the public address announcer for the national anthem and the starting lineups. Till earth and heaven 
think I heard you sing it a little bit. Hey, I, I was. Every I word. know every you word. Know, absolutely. Absolutely. Starting so lineups, lineups coming up here. Both of these teams. Ready to go trade people in your game if you from Cali, Nova Scotia, wearing number seven, Chanel Smith. Becker, also from Cali, Nova Scotia, wearing number 11, Jalen Steele. Starting lineup for both of these teams for the Thunder. They'll go at McDonald, Bullard, Dunker, Wade, Beals, Ishiemi, and for the Hornets, they'll go at Skier, Smith, Ballas, Gascoigne, and Parent. This afternoon's officials, Brian States, Shauna Poirier, and Adam Detian. And we are underway. The chase for the Legacy Cup will be decided in the next 40 minutes or plus. Here's Dunker. Gets it inside. Can't get it to go down and Parent comes up with the rebound. Already love to see the matchup. Abby Dunker, Jasmine Parent grew up playing together at Horton High. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they, you know, manage each other's playing tendencies. They know each other so well. It should be a pretty easy matchup defensively, but we'll see. Both standouts at Acadia University for the Axe women. As Chanel Smith also played her collegiate basketball in Wolfville. Here's yes. Parent. Here's that matchup you spoke of. And Parent wins that. Listen, Jazz finishes really well on the left side. That's her MO. I always have a good laugh with her every once in a while. Like, we, people got to know you're left handed, right? They got to know they got to take that away. So, great position there for her. But back to Acadia, there's a few Acadia alumni out there. You know, Lizzie, Haley right there at the rim. Big finish. Jalen Steer was an assistant coach there for a period of time, so a lot of Acadia connections. I know that their uh, their social media has been really supporting the players, which is great to see. And 
John Trammell, the head coach of the Halifax Hornets, was also an assistant under Len Harvey before taking over Arm Bray Academy. Yeah, JT and Len coached um, at Mount Royal University together as well, so a lot of connections. McDonald and Fallis count it and one. She's got Bullet on her back, and Catherine Fallis has been outstanding this weekend for the Hornets. And she'll go to the line to shoot the and one. Had 20 and 12 in the first quarterfinal game, that victory, and had 10 last night in the semifinal victory is Fallis. Amazing, amazing. Ryerson, or sorry, not Ryerson, Ramp, now Toronto Metropolitan University. Her parents flew in. Uh, they were big supporters following it on social media and said it's not the same as watching it live. So I believe her mom flew in. Dad might have missed the flight. She said I had to pick him up around 1 a.m. I think Friday evening. So, you know, when you think about the support that's in the gym, people flew in to watch this, including family and friends. A lot of people. Take a notice to this legitimate league, an important league for this region and this country. Absolutely. Three. Here's Smith for three. Nothing but net. We've seen it before. We've seen it before. Anyone who's watched her at Acadia, they think they won a couple AUS championships with her shooting the ball like that. Smith, a prolific three-point shooter, leads up the five here for The Thunder, Fuller. Excuse me for the Hornets. There's Lizzie, feels Ishiemi, draws a contact on Gascoigne, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. Feels Ishiemi has been outstanding in this season. 21 points last night in that victory, averaged eight points per game, and she had a breakout year in U Sports for the AUS champions, the Acadia Axe women, and the one element that I'm looking at that if she can improve is that three-point shooting efficiency. If she can get that part of her game, look out. She is going to be a handle, uh, sorry, difficult to handle mm -hmm. in the offensive end. Because she can do it with both hands. She's, yeah. a, she's a guard forward, I like to call. Oh yeah, she's a dominant player, right? I mean, you see her right there with her anticipation the way that she can fight over screens and really anticipate the the ball and where it's going defensively. But you're right, her ability to knock down the three, I think she's improved on it quite a bit already. And it just, again, makes her an even bigger threat than she already is. Back to that AUS championship, I believe there was a pretty big deficit in their AUS final. Right. And Lizzie had a huge role in making the comeback to help their team um, eventually move on to compete at the youth sport. Most definitely was named an all-star in that competition. Capturing that title. And we talked about Acadia being well represented. You know, Haley McDonald took a year off and played some pro basketball over in Germany. Also did some coaching at her alma mater at Horton High School. Mm -hmm. Now she's returning to the fold. You have an all-Canadian, all-AUS, all-world mm -hmm. player joining Jada Vino and Beals Ishiyemi, they are going to be a juggernaut in the upcoming AUS season. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think um, when we think about what athletes are doing beyond just what they're, they're doing on the court, to know that she went back and coached at Horton High is really, really impressive. I was excited to hear that. But, you know, ultimately, as fans, which we all are, you want to see Haley play as much as you can. So I think we're all excited to see her back. I know the Axe women are excited to see her back. And I know there's a few rookies that didn't get to play with her last year, like a Sammy Russell who's coming back from an injury. You know, they're going to be a tough team to, to defend. Maybe we thought uh, Haley was in retirement mode, but no, she's coming back, and, and we're all excited as fans to see her play. That's great news for the fan base in Wolfville, great news for their program, but it's bad news for the rest of the conference in the country. Yeah, exactly. On top of it, just a great person as well. Her and Ellen, I think I mentioned it before, hosting our Now's the Time podcast that had four episodes. And to just really interact with them off the court and, and get to know their personality a little bit, I think that was really, really unique. It was an opportunity for me. I got to be on the podcast with them. But Haley was fantastic, as was Ellen. She's working with Sport and Entertainment Atlantic, I think over in PEI in a golf tournament. So she's not here today. Um, but really just unbelievable people. Multiple substitutions here as the Thunder able to tie the game up. 
on a 5-0 run after an 8-3 start by the Hornets. That three's no good by Hannah Brown, who's checked into the game for the first time, along with Lucy Beaumont, Alina McMillan, and Kaylin Crosby. Nothing but net. There you go. Vanessa Pickard, like I said, was not playing yesterday. I think she might have been working. Um, but to have her back again, just another weapon, especially outside the three. For anyone who uh, is unfamiliar, Vanessa played at St. of X for a period of time, and I believe uh, was at University of uh, McMaster. McMaster. Yes. Average nine points per game is Pickard. Trying to get it inside. Little mismatch here in size, but oh. There it is, Haley McDonald. Didn't care about the matchup between her and mm. the bigger forward and had the size there and Hannah Brown couldn't close out in time and there's the confidence being displayed by Haley McDonald. Yeah, I thought Hannah was gonna get a piece of it and I'm pretty sure she, maybe a fingernail touched that, but you know, Haley shoots the ball with confidence. It's one of the reasons why she's, you know, on the cusp of breaking some, some additional records. But how she scored, I believe it was 52 points in an AUS championship game. I mean, she just kind of gets into a zone. So hard to defend. Defending on the defender on the perimeter, shooting threes. She slashes to the net. Her ability to finish with her left and right hand, floaters, spin moves. You know, she's just so versatile. Any of uh, any of the guards watching that are under 5'5", five five, don't say you can't score in the paint or over bigs, right? Haley's a perfect example of what it takes and, and how you need to train to become a player that can score at three levels. 10-0 run here by the Thunder. And you mentioned that you know record-breaking performance. It was in the semifinal. And my voice was cracking. I called every single point in that AUS Were Women's you on Championship. That call? I was on that call. <laughs> Me and Augie Jones, yep. former standout from St. Francis Xavier. Yep. Uh, men's program and then was uh, head coach with the women's program as well. Shout out to Augie. Absolutely. But, uh, <laughs> boy, it was an exciting time inside the Scotiabank Center. I'm sure there were lots of people that brought out, you know, the pen and paper to start tallying, right? Like, is she, like, she's pretty close to getting 30. Oh, 40, oh, 50. Yeah, she broke the record. It's a U Sports record that still stands. Men's or women's, I think. Absolutely. In a, in a or not a final, but in a... In a playoff. Yeah, playoff. So the Hornets will have the ball out of the timeout. They trail it 13 to eight. Here's Alana McMillan and Hannah Brown will be called for the offensive foul. As Kerwin's come into the game for the first time for the Thunder. Yeah, Hannah getting called for that offensive foul, not something that you necessarily want to see, but it's two people involved in that, right? You have to have uh, your offensive player being patient and lining people up and making sure that your your screener's set before you make the action, right? So, you know, a lot of people get mad at the screener for setting a moving screen, but it's as a guard, I'm, I know all too well, if I go too soon, the consequence of the foul on my post is likely my fault. And Beaumont will foul, draw the foul on Pickard, but on that last offensive sequence for the Thunder, you can just see the determination on Haley McDonough. She took Alina McMillan to the cup. That's gonna be a tough matchup for McMillan. She has to know that it's a championship game. You need to elevate your level of compete. It's an opportunity to take home a championship and these women are coming at that championship. That's what they played for for the last two months mm -hmm. to get to this point mm -hmm. of the season. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, um, Alina has had a chance to play against Haley quite a few times. But even more so when you're thinking about the other matchups that they've already had against the Thunder. This is a time where Alina really needs to take over as the point guard um, for the Hornets, but even more so defensively. What are Haley's tendencies? And then more so for your teammates, they need to load up. It's not all on whomever is defending Haley. Right. It's a full team effort. So yes. how are you packing the paint? How are you defending the three? Are you you know, hedging, are you doubling to get it out of her hands? But again, Haley's so skilled that it is, she is tough to defend. However, it needs to be a full team effort for the Hornets. As Jada Vino's checked into the game for the first time for the Thunder, two-time AUS champion, another one of those Acadia Axe women, AUS MVP, the reigning MVP, yep. all Canadian scoring champion, was also the AUS Rookie of the Year. Crosby, the product of Dalhousie University with the put back. That'll cut the lead to five. Here it is again, going downhill. One on three is McDonald. 
Can't get it to go. Casillas has checked into the game for the first time for the Hornets. Beaumont, wide open three. That won't go. Brown keeps it alive. Macias will step into it, and it's good. You know what? Ari's been doing that with St. Mary's for quite some time. I believe she sat out most of the AUS finals um, due to an injury to her foot. So I'm hoping that she's feeling a little bit better being back on the, on the court here today. She did exactly what she does every time I see her make a three, right? She points to the air, and it just gets her team into it, the fans into it as well. It's back to back to back threes right now. That's a long three by McMillan. As Pickard nailed one down here on the last defense, oh, sorry, offensive sequence for the Thunder. Two point game. Fireworks are flying. Can we go Beano four for, for four? three? That scrapes the rim. Had a good look off of that pin down screen. Here's Beaumont. Beaumont turns Vino inside out. Brown for three. Can't get it to fall. Chased down by Langeal. As Langeal gives it up to Kerwin. Here's Kerwin. Kerwin gets inside. Flips it up and in. Yes, product of UMB Varsity Reds. Such a tenacious defender. We talked about her, I mean, all the time during my time coaching at St. Mary's. Marley is feisty on defense. So to see her get into a little bit of an offensive rhythm, is something I've really, really enjoyed over the last two years of her development. As Brown couldn't put that mid-range jumper down. Here's Kerwin again, looking for back-to-back -back buckets. Count it, and one. Listen, right on cue. Right on cue. I talked to her dad uh, briefly before the game. I see him here in the stands. I think her mom is on a flight uh, back from somewhere trying to watch it. Uh, through the Wi-Fi in the air from what I'm hearing. But, you know, it was great to talk to her dad, Greg, and just hear how much he's been enjoying watching it. And she said, or Greg said, you know, Marley was a little bit uh, a little bit sad that this was the end of the, the MWBA season, which I think is a good thing. You know, you want to have athletes wanting to come back. And that's pivotal for her as she's preparing for her upcoming season at UNB is Kerwin. Started last year for Coach Speedy and the Reds as Dunker will be called for the foul. Nice spin move in the paint by Beaumont. Yeah, Dunker didn't like that call. Uh, had a little chat with the officials there. I think she might even know uh, Adam Detienne a little bit, so it's always neat to see that interaction. But, you know, Abby's such a smart player that she'll just make the adjustment and know when the right time is to look to contest and challenge a shot versus when does she just need to play straight up defense, box out, secure the board, and, and push the ball in the offensive direction for her team. So Beaumont will go to the line as Adam Detienne will join Len Harvey's staff oh, this year all as right. an assistant coach. All right. Dunker knocks down the free throw. So, excuse me, Beaumont, that is. Finished her third year here at St. Mary's University, a product from Fredericton. Wade knocks it down. Wade plays their varsity collegiate basketball at UMB. Yeah, I think she was an AUS All-Star one or two or, or more times. Uh, has since finished her career but I'm really excited to see her in the league. I know she's not uh, representing the Fredericton Freeze necessarily, but part of the league is really making sure that wherever the athletes are, they are able to play. You don't have to live in Halifax to play for a Halifax team. If you're from New Brunswick and you're here working, try out, let's see who we can get on the court. It's really about giving these athletes a chance to mix and match who they're playing with. So, you know, having her having her here playing on a Halifax team is a really unique experience would be my guess. Yes, you mentioned that as she played for the Reds, she overcame a knee injury Yep. to make it back, showcasing her determination and grit. And she just moved to Halifax last fall. There you go. And works at the IWK and recorded 236 career assists. Wow, point guard. She'll bring it over the timeline. Jaya Varney's into the game for the first time. Steer comes back. Nice catch there by Beals Ishiemi. Outstanding block out though by Jalen Skier. Here's Gascoigne. Varney for three. She'll leave it short. And Quackenbush, who's come to, into the game for the first time for the Thunder, she'll gather the rebound. Another outstanding player 
at the AUS level and U Sports level is Catherine Krakenbush, who played at Memorial. Fields Isiemi, that's too easy. too easy. If you're a Halifax Hornets, you can't allow Isiemi a foot away from the rim and no resistance. She'll knock that down 10 times out of 10. Parent now trying to go to work on Dunker. Spins. Here's Barney off the bounce. Left it short, late whistle. And Wade will be called for the foul. And Jayla will go to the line to shoot two. 10 point lead for the Thunder. Jayla will try to get it with an eight. Yeah, you'd like to see her knock down both shots. See if the Hornets can get a stop on the defensive end as she comes up short there. But try to get a stop on the defensive end and really cut the lead, right? The last thing you want is to be going into the second quarter down 13, 14 points. So it's all within staying in a close point spread to the Thunder. You don't have to maintain a lead, but you always have to keep it competitive with them. Barney unable to knock down both. The former Canada West All-Rookie Team of Mount Royal in 2015. Kerwin for three. That scrapes the front of the rim, and Barney with the rebound. Here comes Skier with speed. Skier steps into a three. That's off the side of the backboard, but the putback is there by Perrin. Turnover, stolen by Skier. Thought about it, Barney. Barney almost challenged there. Dunker, that shot by Fallis is no good. Yeah, time and score there. They had a chance to take the last shot of the quarter. Dunker on the run. Dunker banks it home. A standing pass by Kerwin as the Thunder make them pay on the other end. So after 10 minutes, the Thunder with a 10-point lead, 31 to 21. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't take care of the ball on, uh, to end the quarter. I think they could have got a, I mean, Cat had a pretty good look there, but you're looking at time and score, right? If you don't have a good clean layup, you need to make sure that you're getting a nice look at the rim so that the buzzer ends in your possession, or and the buzzer sounds when it's in your end. To give up that shot, you know, the offensive or defensive rebound goes to the Thunder and they secure two points at the other end. That's a four point swing, right? And that just makes such a big difference when you're, um, going into the second quarter. Luckily, it's only 10. I wish Jayla had to knock down those two free throws, but you know what? Keep it within reason um, and maybe try to get the crowd behind you as well. I think that's always helpful. <laughs> it's going to be a mixed emotions here on well, who's going to cheer for who. You got two teams that are based out of Halifax. The Thunder, they play their home games here at St. Mary's University. The Hornets, they play at Mount St. Vincent University, as you mentioned. All of these players are very familiar with each other, their families, this region. So it's good to see a great crowd on hand. We're almost at near full capacity, and that's awesome as well. As this league grows, we're gonna see these type of crowds because it's great basketball. It's fantastic, as I like to call it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're looking at the weather, right? We know we're getting into uh, those warm summer days. It's three o'clock on a Sunday. I think it's about 25 degrees out and people showed up to watch the game, right? There was, you kind of question like, well, people maybe want to be at the beach or you know, out on a patio, but they showed up, right? And so for me, again, that just solidifies exactly what we thought would happen if we put together a really great product. And that goes back to, you know, the athletes being on the court. It goes back to the volunteers. It goes back to the live streaming with Maritime Athletic Profile and, and Aurora Productions. It goes back to Eastlake. It goes back to everybody saying, Let's get behind you, let's build the league, let's tell the stories, and then the fans show up because they know them. And it's a great product because there's outstanding athletes competing. Absolutely. The compete level, I'll always say, is a vital part of, of any sport. And the compete level is about a million between these women when they compete for 40 minutes or plus. Yep. So the Hornets started with possession. Here in the second, trailing by 10. There's Bullard. Tough nice shot. Nice fadeaway as Fallis couldn't get there in time. As Bullard able to knock down that field goal. Stretches the lead to 12. Gascoigne looking to go inside the parent. Hands it off to Skier. Skier now, baseline jumper. Tough shot forced by Langell. And McDonald will come back the other way. McDonald, pull up. McDonald, nothing but net. net. You can really see the fire in her eyes from our area oh, up yeah. top here. I was just looking the, at the Homburg Center. The I, focus. I can't, I didn't see who she high-fived. It might have been Lizzie, and it was like a high-five with 
some passion behind it. Like, yeah, knock down the shot. Let's keep this going. Let's keep the momentum going in our favor. So you saw her at the end one early in the first quarter, slaps the floor and lets out a yell, right? You've seen that from Haley a few times, and it's just, again, brings the crowd in. It brings in her fans and or brings in her teammates, and, you know, it's working in their favor. You're getting the crowd behind you. Nice penetration there by Beals Ishiyemi. A nice no-look pass to a cutting Bullard. She'll go to the line to shoot two. And the guard play starting to take over. The two Axe women creating for their teammates. As Halifax, the Hornets trying to shut down and neutralize that particular play on the other end. A tough task for Gascoigne, Skier, and Fallis along with Beaumont out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, you know, but the Hornets have some uh, some different players that we could bring in off the bench too. If you need more length, you got Leah Martin there, Kaylin Crosby, Hannah Brown. So you have some length to really help deter the guards from getting to the rim for the Thunder. Great ball movement as Parrott finishes. Beaumont gave up a good shot to get a great shot from Parrott. And that's what they need. Now they need a stop here on the defensive end. Langell trying to take Perrin off the bounce. Gets inside. Spins. A little too strong, and Beaumont will clear the boards. Here's Beaumont. Beaumont with space. Crosses over. Skier for three. It's good. Big shot. Big shot. I think when, you, when you're looking at the Hornets, they need to keep looking to attack the paint. With the Thunder dropping in, that was a great kick out. Jalen had her feet set to knock it down and really getting into that rhythm. I remember they were playing a game back at the Mount and they shot the lights out. I think that they need to keep playing with confidence and getting to the rim, but more so defense, 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 right? The full team effort, they have to be locked in. They're missing some rotations on dribble penetration and they're not able to drop down to the post right now to take away those little bunnies at the rim. So communication has to improve. And I think I saw them talking when uh, Bullard was taking two free throws. I saw the Hornets having some conversations. So hopefully they're ready to make some adjustments. A few substitutions here for the Thunder as Vino will come back along with Wade. Beals Ishiyemi on the inbound, way to the baseline jumper. Good look, couldn't get it to fall, and Parent will gather the rebound. Here's Gascoigne, kick out. Beaumont for three in rhythm. That's a great shot. I would prefer if Lizzie stayed on Beaumont instead of leaving a ball side shooter. You know, coaches talk about that quite frequently. She can stunt and show and then hustle back, but you gave Lucy a pretty good look, and she is pretty consistent from three for a, for a you know, a, a post player. It goes back to having seeing those global athletes who can play multiple positions, and Lucy's no different. Positionist basketball, mm -hmm. and you can thank <laughs> a few leagues, the WNBA and the NBA, for developing that positionist basketball. And, I mean, it's very vital in the development of young players. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think about um, my own development, point guard. So I got to handle the ball all the time. I got to make decisions all the time, and that just builds your IQ and builds your confidence. So even though there might be some taller players out there, my brother's six foot five. He was quite tall even when he was growing up. You know, he can't just be hanging out in the paint all day long. He has to handle the ball and be a little bit uncomfortable in order to develop his skill set. So you can see that showing up. Like Claire Gascoigne there is over six feet tall, more of a guard, if anything, but she can play out of the she can play out of the post as well. Skier came up a little short there, wanted a foul on that attempt. Here's Wade. Dunker. Leah Martin's into the game for the Hornets. Dunker. Can't take Martin off the drive, but picks up the loose ball. McDonald, Can't leave her. wide open, bang, and she knocks it down. Can't leave Haley McDonald wide open from beyond the arc. Yeah, and it's tough, right? There's a turnover, everyone's scrambling defensively. I recognize we get to protect the hoop, but the person I'm trying to find, where's Haley, where's Haley, where's Haley? And again, that's that communication that has to happen. It can't be a matter of Jalen hustling back to find Haley. Who's there? Is it Chanel? Is it Claire? Is it Leah? Is it Lucy? Who needs to cover her so she's not getting a clean look? Because all that does, increase their confidence, and then she just keeps knocking them down all game long. 
And that's knocked out of bounds. And last touch by McDonald, and there's the defense and intensity. The bench loves it. And Skier closed out on McDonald. As the Thunder will call a timeout, as Parker Regan will talk it over. They lead it 40 to 29. Here, and if you're Parker Regan, you've got to be happy with the offense of Oakwood. You come into this game almost averaging 70 points per game. You know these teams, you know your opponent, you know the, attendant, the tendencies that they're going to show. And if you're John Tramble, you also know it as well. It's like you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, very hard to win three games in a row when you beat the opponent twice in the yeah. same calendar year. Yeah, absolutely, right? I think the, the spread between the games is maybe, what, a week, two weeks, something like that, I think, exactly. was, it wasn't too much. Um, but you have time to make those adjustments. Obviously, being live streamed, you can go back and watch a few things. Mm -hmm. But also keeping in mind, the two teams that we're watching, they have athletes that are coaches, that were coaches, that are really, really knowledgeable. And so although it's hard to beat a team three times in a row, I feel like the Thunder is pretty confident in their ability to make adjustments as they as they need. I can't see them, you know, letting the game crumble uh, as the game continues on. I just, you're watching them walk on the floor, right? They're communicating, who do they have? How do we want to strategize on defense? You see Haley giving Jada the little high five there. So they're locked in, they're yeah. locked in. And you can look out there, all 10 women on the floor, I'm going to say it with confidence, have been team captains on their teams in U Sports or CCAA. Yes, I could also say that I believe maybe nine of 10 were AUS All-Stars as well. <laughs> <laughs> it lots might be 10 of, for 10. Lots of accolades. Thunder now trying to build on this lead. Here's Dunker, she'll hand it off to McDonald and Macias is knocked through the floor. She'll pick up that offensive foul and you can see the intensity there. Yeah, I know it's not an AUS championship, but I love, I love the intensity. Um, I think that uh, the way that they have been playing from the start to where we're at right now has really been unbelievable to see. I wasn't sure. I don't think anyone was sure, right? But I think that they elevated the game. You know, you hear, what is it? Iron sharpens iron or something like that. And so they've just been doing a great job at finding ways to compete with one another. And then, you you know, I'm sure the Hornets are looking at the Thunder saying, okay, you're competing like this. Let me elevate my game. McDonald try to come right back at McMillan. McMillan with that circus shot, banks it home in a last offensive sequence. Lead down to nine. Gascoigne, nice cut, banks it in, and she was able to beat Quackenbush to the rim. Yeah, and Clara is so long, right? You see where she took her steps from, and then her ability to extend and finish at the rim makes it really, really challenging to block. And Clara is a bit of a silent player, too. You know, sometimes you finish a game and you realize that she scored over 20 points, and you're trying to figure out where, where was it, and it's just her ability to anticipate, her ability to make really, really good plays, to know when it's her time to shine. Sometimes she doesn't actually take advantage and you're kind of giving her the Clara, like go, take over, take over. And so, you know, it's good to see her finishing at the rim there and playing with confidence. Kerwin will come back in for the Thunder. McDonald for three, it's good. And that was stop. almost from the parking lot. You can't fault the defense by McMillan. She closed all the way out was able to get into the pocket of McDonald, but it didn't matter. Yeah, Here's she Monroe. Shoots comfortably from uh, the volleyball attack line, which is the black line on the, on the court near half for anyone who's unfamiliar with the volleyball lines. As Chanel Smith will spin and hit the jumper. Yeah, her family's in the stands. I see them over there. Dunker Fame now. Yeah, well represented. Yeah. The Smith family. Here in Halifax. Here's Smith again. Macias. Monroe for three. Bang! And Monroe hits it from way out. Ooh, big shot. You know what? She did that really well at CBU. So I'm really excited to see they're making a decision to sub her in. Ooh. Nice Makes backdoor it. cut. Beals this Yemi. Gets her own rebound, she'll bank it home. Can't give her two tries. No, Lizzie does not give up on any any play at all, right? So even when you think that you've maybe secured the rebound, 
you need to be on the lookout with your head on a swivel because Lizzie's just chomping, right? Ready to take the ball, ready to take the ball. And if you leave it out, she will rip it from you and finish at the rim as she just did. McMillan gets all the ways to the rim, is pushed from behind by McDonald. And Alina will step up and shoot a pair. Three current uh, teammates. We talked about Acadia being well represented. St. Mary's is well represented as well. And McMillan, Gascoigne, and Beaumont, all current Huskies. And yep. Macias, who just finished up at St. Mary's, being represented for the Hornets. Yeah, it's so great to see. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, you're hoping to see players kind of mix match with who they're playing, but at the same time, it gives them a chance to keep developing with one another. And that's one of the things that we really were excited about for the league is how are the current players able to develop um, as they move into their, their next year of their AUS or ACA season. And so um, to have them out there on the floor, I hope that this is a chance where they can learn um, their own teammates' tendencies, where does someone want the ball, um, and then just develop their skill set as well. As Pickard able to finish through the contact, and that fouls on Monroe. That'll be her first, team's fourth. Aaliyah Frazier's into the game for the first time. Plays her collegiate basketball at St. Francis Xavier. Yeah, I think Aaliyah was on uh, the AUS All-Rookie Team. But what, two years ago? Three years ago, maybe. I think uh, 2019, co COVID 20, really. 20. Yeah, that <laughs> COVID year, Which right? Changes everything, yeah. <laughs> Huge difference. It was a good year, though, to get this league organized. And I talked about it in the bronze medal game. You know, although there was no competition, it allowed to get this, you know, get the organization together yeah. and have this league going forward. Yeah, it, uh, you know, it's almost probably two years to the day nearly since Brad called me the first time to talk about it. Um, and I think the biggest thing for us is really wanting to, to do it right. You know, mm -hmm. if you're going to take so it. So important. Yeah, if you're going to put this together, you can't just do the bare minimum. So we did want to go a little bit over the top in a sense. Uh, and so I think people are happy. You know, there are still lots of things that we can improve on as always, but we took our time. There were a lot of questions that we needed to figure out. There were a lot of changes we made along the way, um, but I feel as though we did a great job with marketing. So shout out to our marketing and branding team. Again, volunteers that are on our social media who really helped us build the league to tell the story. Again, it's that investment back into the sport. So Lanjo will be called for the foul, the former Husky, and Crosby will shoot it. Paulus has come back for the Hornets. Kerwin's back out there for the Thunder as well. Yeah, I was just gonna say, uh, Kalen Crosby, I believe, uh, maybe cousins with Tessa Stamberger? I think, I think. I know Tessa was here yesterday, uh, trying to figure out how do we how do we get her out here next year. But I know she's playing professionally overseas. Yes, over in Germany. And I heard that she tried to get back in time. Stanberger, a standout at Dalhousie University, the daughter of Anna Stanberger, the former head coach and standout at Dalhousie as a player. Yeah, it, you know. There are lots of players that are playing overseas, and I think for us it's really trying to figure out the best way to, to support them. I know Tessa threw her name in the mix uh, to show that she was interested in playing, so we'll see what it looks like next year in terms of our league structure, but there's lots of players that could be playing that aren't playing for you know a number of different circumstances, but what I think is we got a really great group of, of players out here on the floor. Tessa just happened to be one I spotted in the stands and said, how do, like, Tessa, how do we get, how do we her get you out here? Deals this Yemi's three's no good. Here's Skier. Skier gets inside, leaves it there for Frazier. Back to Skier. Just inside the three-point line, nothing but net. So the lead's down the four. Listen, that's good for the Hornets, right? You want to have a nice, tight game heading into halftime. It was about 14. So they did a great job at just chipping away. Lizzie with the three, right? We talked about that earlier in the broadcast. She's just so confident. She's so confident, right? She missed the last one, I think, two possessions before and just said, oh, oh well, I'm shooting it anyway. I'm open, this is the right shot to take. And Skier unable to knock down that wide open jumper. 50.5 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. 
and you saw Coach John Tramble talking to Jalen on the court. So they coached together at Armbray Academy, and he was telling Jay, attack the rim, attack the rim, right? Don't settle for that shot. Get yourself a good look, put pressure on the defense, and then as a point guard, when you get in the key, distribute the ball and find a good look for someone. Maybe something similar could have happened there with Alina, right? Attack the rim, pressure on the D, then kick out to your open shooters. Here's Beals, Ishiemi, wow. spins. Can't get it to go. Langell's there to clean up the boards and she'll be fouled and she'll go to the line to shoot too. Yeah, Laura Langell, part of the uh, SMU Huskies team that is responsible for a few AUS championships that mm. are uh, over on a sign, kind of to our right there. Just an unbelievable post player, played at CPA, uh, CP Allen High School. Just a great human too. I will give a shout out to Laura. I had a chance to coach with her at St. Mary's and just getting to know her off the court and, and what she does and what she stands for. Again, it's just something I really, really connect with, right? We see them as just being passionate, powerful women on the court and they're the same off the court. You're correct, AUS rookie team member and second team AUS all-star team at SMU. Spent five seasons with the Huskies, scored over a thousand points. Spent two seasons as an assistant as well with Scott Monroe. Yeah, and you know what? It's really, really neat to have athletes coming back. I think there's, like I said, quite a few players that have gone from being an athlete uh, into being a coach and you only learn from there. And I think, you know, thinking about Haley goes to being a coach then coming back to finish her, her time with um, with the Axe women. So really interested to know what she learned as a coach and how it transfers into her, her playing as an athlete. So time out on the floor. The Thunder lead at 53 to 44. Alongside Tasia McKenna, Vince Williams on hand, and the entire Maritime Athletic Profiles crew here at the Homburg Center. The Legacy Cup, it will be awarded to the winning team. It's at the scores table, you can probably see it on the screen. That's what these women have been chasing for for two months. Absolutely, you know, Jen McKenzie's down there. She's ev everywhere, not officiating this weekend. But I think she's on the 30 second shot clock. She said, put it on the table. Claim she'll protect it. So I'm, uh, you know, hoping a basketball doesn't go flying over to it. But the Legacy Cup representing all the players past, present and future, along with everyone that's really supported us to get the lead to where it's at. Very important, and these women are competing to win it. As you mentioned it, you know, it's not an AUS championship, but it's an important one to win. And you can see that they really want to get it done. Bragging rights, an mm -hmm. opportunity to win the inaugural championship. So it's a championship nevertheless. Nobody wants to lose a championship, and that's why we play and compete. Yes, absolutely. And I think it's okay for them to want to win AUS championships, to win a Legacy Cup championship, to win, you know, the, the Eastling Classic championship that was hosted by Basketball Nova Scotia. You see the Sunday afternoon championship game, right? It's It can be pretty intense. And it goes back to just speaking about, yeah, you know, we do want to play and, and have fun, but they want to compete. I Like, I want to win. <laughs> I want to win. So timeout, call by the Thunder. They lead at 53 to 46, so some strategy here. It's the latter part of this first half as Parker Regan trying to draw something up here. And John Tramble, who missed the first two games, was in attendance to one of his best friends, Luke Reynolds, local product who played basketball as well, went to CPA and played at St. Avex. Here's Reynolds. I didn't know him because I, yeah. I watched him play. Yeah, okay, okay, good. <laughs> I knew that John Tramble was at a was wedding, there. right? He yeah. was at his, his wedding, wedding. Yep. and uh, he was playing close attention. Yep. <laughs> he was he was paying close attention. And when I got home, yeah. he sent me a text yep. that he was paying attention because he heard me say his name and why he wasn't here. Yeah. There's a little chuckle between me and Tramble <laughs> <laughs> as he said, yeah, you're right. I am paying attention. I'm not close to a television but I'm following closely <laughs> here on Maritime Athletic Profiles. You know what? Again, we wanted it to be um, a league that was accessible. Of course, we want fans in the stands, in the gym, you know, enjoying the atmosphere. We've got food trucks, our beers being sold, Garrison Brewery, our courtside ale. I think I just saw someone walk in there. But not everyone can be here. So right. how can we make sure people are watching? And that's why this live stream and, um, and our Eastlink broadcasting on TV is so important. 
and extremely important for the brand. Full court pressure being applied by the Hornets. That forces a time, uh, excuse me, a turnover. And they'll get an opportunity here to cut into this lead. Got to hurry though. McMillan. Yep. yep. Gascoigne for three. Good luck. Had a good look, but couldn't get it to go down. And two quarters in the books. The Thunder lead at 53 to 46. Listen, the Hornets have to be happy with where they're at right now. Like I said, it was almost a almost a 15 point deficit. And you know how you're teetering on that. It can go one way, it can slip to 25, or you can cut the lead as, as they've done here. So the Hornets should be happy. They're looking much better than they were the last match that they had against the Thunder. And so I'm hoping that there's a good discussion, positive discussion at halftime, but I know Thunder's gonna make some adjustments. They have high expectations for themselves, not only coming from their coaches, but also coming from the team, the, the team themselves, the players themselves. So we'll step aside. We'll be back with some numbers and a halftime report. Stay with us. You're watching the MWBA Championship Weekend Finals, the chase for the Legacy Cup here on Maritime Athletic Profiles.
Welcome back inside the Holmberg Center on the campus of St. Mary's University for this championship final, the chase of the Legacy Cup. After 20 minutes, the Halifax Thunder lead the Halifax Hornets 53 to 46 alongside Taja McKenna, Vince Williams on hand, and Taja, uh, the stars were out in the first 20 minutes. Haley McDonald in particular, the second leading scorer in the league, had 15. Lizzie Beals Ishiemi had 13 to lead the way for the, the Thunder. But on the other side, it's a balanced score, and it's been balanced it all year long for the Hornets. John Tramble's team, you look up and down the lineup, you look up and down the points per game, it's right there. Chanel Smith leads the way coming into this game, points per game at 11, but everybody else in round eight or nine in contributions. Mm -hmm. As Alina McMillan led the way with nine points, and then you have one, two, three, four players with five points. Mm, yeah, scoring by committee, right, is the, the MO for the Halifax Hornets. And you can see that, right? You have so many different three-point shooters, some slashers, rebounders that are just creating second chance opportunities. And so I'm, I'm not surprised to see the point spread like that. And then I'm also not surprised to see Haley and Lizzie really dominating. And that's not out of selfish basketball. They're playing within their skill set. They're playing exactly how the ex they're expected to play. Um, and so, you know, I'm not, again, not surprised to hear 15 and 13 points on the board. And I would assume that we'll, we'll continue to see that trend here in the second half. As the Thunder will start with possession here in the third. Dunkers out there for the Thunder. Bullard, Wade, McDonald, and Pickard. For the Hornets, they are counter with Ballas, Parent, Smith, Skier, and Gascoigne. Here's McDonald, splits the D. Try to lay it inside there for Dunker. That's stolen by Parent. Yeah, it wasn't quite on balance. You could see the play she was trying to make. She'll make the adjustment though. Haley's such a smart player that she's already probably made that correction in her head. Fallis now inside the parent. Parent trying to go to work. Back out the Fallis. Fallis trying to take Pickert. Nice move. Pull up, can't get it to go. And Pickert will come up with the rebound. She'll race back the other way with numbers. Here's Wade. Dunker with the pull up. Left it short, try to chase it down. And Smith will come up with the rebound. Pace starting to quicken here in the third. Here's Skier. Skier trying to take Smith, McDonald off the bounce. Nice pocket pass inside the Fallis. She'll draw the contact on Pickard and go to the line to shoot two. Excellent pass, right? And I think that goes back to what we're talking about. The guards on the Hornets need to probe the defense and put pressure on the defense. Cat's doing a great job finding position, and the point guards are doing a great job just, you know, slicing and dicing pocket pass, threading the needle to get that to her. Hopefully she knocks down two free throws here, but I really like how the Hornets are playing on, on both ends of the floor right now. Ballas, one of the players by committee in regards to scoring, had five in the first 20, and she'll have seven, and she's able to knock down both of those free throws, and that'll cut the lead to five. Here's Wade now. Back door, McDonald's. And McDonald's bumped by Skier, and Haley will go to the line to shoot two. So Skier tried to take away that three ball, mm -hmm. overplay uh, beyond the arc, but backdoor cut by McDonald's. Yeah, and she's such a smart player. You know, I'm, when I was coaching at St. Mary's, you're trying to tell your, your players how to defend her, and it's, it's hard, right? You take one thing away, and she's just so smart that she makes the adjustment. Take away the three, I'm gonna cut back door. Close out too much, I'm gonna take you off the bounce. Step up too early, I'm going under you and finishing on the reverse side. McDonald up to 17 now. Skier gets it over to Gascoigne. Gascoigne, as Pickard fell, can't get it to go down and a fight for the rebound between Parents and Bullard. It will stay with the Hornets. The moisture they'll clean up on the floor. Get that taken care of. As you mentioned, a beautiful day. It's beautiful three days. Because Friday was a little, a little dicey, with some rain. But once that rain cleared away, we had high humidity mm -hmm. in Halifax. Oh, as soon as I saw.
the weather last week, I knew. It's like the floor is going to be slippery. Everybody knows what to expect uh, when you show up here. So I'm sure, you know, lots of people have commented on seeing us out on the floor cleaning all the time. And part of that is that moisture. The key can get a little bit slick. And so um, it's so important to us, the safety of the athletes. That's Absolutely. why you see us out there with towels, really making sure that we're getting all the spots that we can. A wasted trip there by the Hornets. An opportunity now for the Thunder to build on this lead. Here's McDonald. Ballas coming all the way out Great on job McDonald. by Ballas. Great job. Hand up, though. McDonald gets inside, flips it up, can't get it to go, and Smith comes up with the rebound. Here's Smith now. Behind the back. Smith into the corner to Gascoigne. Gascoigne. Baby sky hooks no good. Parent with the putback. Gets her own rebound. That's ripped away by Bullard, and Parrott will be called for the reach. Yeah, a little bit of contact down there. Claire needs to get the ball a little bit higher over the rim, right? Just coming up short, but again, using her length to get into the key, try to finger roll it up over the top of the rim. And then Jasmine's battling in the paint, right? I wish, I, I'm sure she's already reflecting, right? She's on the left side, left hand layup, strong hand, and comes up a bit short and then commits the foul, which is never what you want to see, right? Don't uh, compound your mistakes, but we'll make the, she'll make the correction. And again, just looking for the Hornets to stay consistent with attacking. They don't need to start settling for threes by any means, right? Keep attacking the rim, keep looking for easy finishes, maybe get yourself to the free throw line as well. Here's Wade off the bounce. High off the glass, can't get it to go. Beaumont checking in for the first time in the second half, and Macias puts it in from three. Puts it in, points to the sky, right in front of her own bench, and they love it. Here's Wade, Quackenbush now, is checked into the game. Wade gets inside, and Wade will draw the foul on Macias and Grace will shoot a pair. So Marley Kerwin's back out there as well for the Thunder. Macias picks up her second, team's fourth, and that's important. It's tough. With 7-10 remaining here in the third, if you're the Thunder, don't settle for threes unless it's wide open. Get to the you rim. gotta get to the rim yep. and go downhill. Yeah, seven minutes of bonus. I'm sure we might start hearing a little bit from the Hornet side, right? Talking about the uh, the foul count up on the board. But what's really important for the players is not to allow that to get into their head, right? Don't start talking to the refs. There's nothing you can do other than play really solid defense. Make sure that you're not sending them to the line. And then just focus on your own game, right? Don't get into the match of, you know, look at the score, look at the foul count. And so I'm, I'm pretty confident that the Hornets will stay composed throughout the duration of this quarter. And Missy Emmy with the pull up. She's got 15 now. And it's going back and forth here, trading buckets. Macias, bang, and Macias knocks down back to back threes, and she's got it going. They need that. Is that her third one on the game? That is her third. She cuts the lead to three. One possession game, 58 to 55. Here's Wade. Wade gets bumped off the ball, couldn't sustain the dribble, and that's a turnover. You can feel the momentum shift, right? You can feel the momentum shift. But again, you're looking at really smart players for the Thunder. My guess is that they don't get rattled by this. They'll probably talk about it amongst themselves and just stay calm and composed. And Macias got that off arm into the throat and chest area on Wade. And Macias will pick up the foul. That's her third personal, fifth team foul. So they're over the limit. Next foul. The Thunder will shoot a couple free throws. Fallis will check out of the game as Maddie Monroe's come back for the Hornets. Feels this Yemi. Draws the double. Wade, baseline jumper. Too strong. And Beaumont with the rebound. Beaumont now. Trying to go downhill. Monroe thought about Ooh. hitting the three. She hit one in the first half. Spins on Wade. Back door Mc McMillan. McMillan turns it over, and here it comes bit of Wade. Contact in there. Kerwin. Quackenbush for three. 
puts it in. Wow. That was a great, great find by Marley Kerwin. She's one of the best at it, right? She looks like she's going right to the rim, but her vision, her peripheral vision is, is impeccable, and she delivers a really, really crisp pass, and when Quackenbush catches that, it's already in her shooting pocket, and she's ready to knock it down. So Quackenbush knocked down that crucial three. Wade will be called for the foul. She'll sit down, picking up her second. Haley McDonald will come back into the game. And another storyline into this game. You know, the Thunder came into this game and this weekend without uh, Justine Colley Legier. As Justine sustained an injury to her left knee. She's on the bench right now. And she's fully dressed. And yep. That's outstanding to see. Cheering yeah. on her teammates. Yeah, Justine is a team player. Justine is a competitor, right? Of course she wants to be on the floor. But one of the things that I'm hoping the athletes that are watching can take away from this is that you can contribute to the team in any way. You don't always have to be on the floor, right? So you can see her clapping, you can see her cheering her teammates on, and that's one of the things that Justine has always brought to the table, whether she was on the floor or on the bench during her time at St. Mary's or with the senior women's national team. Her passion shows up from the moment she arrives in the gym to the moment that the game wraps up. And so I'm so happy to see her here and you know, hoping that there's a, a quick recovery to her injury. Yes, St. Mary's product, a standout from East Preston, Nova Scotia. Boy, oh boy, the list <laughs> is huge. I can't even read it off in time of all the things she has done in this game. Yeah, we got to tell everyone to Google her. She would be on, uh, I think the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame is probably going to have all of the notes that you have. They can find that there. 28.3 points per game. It's a league record in 2012. 13 in the AUS. The all time leading score in the AUS as Crosby will be called for, excuse me, Isiemi will be called for the foul. You had a look on your face that it might have been a clean block. Listen, That's wi second women, personal. women can block shots too, right? And there's sure a little bit of contact, but for the most part, Lizzie got off the ground really well. And from, again, my point of view, it looked like a pretty clean block at the top. Obviously, I couldn't see any body contact um, that might have been on a, on a forearm or something like that. But I think we just have to keep in mind that women are athletic and can make plays in the air like that. And, and Lizzie's one that does it so frequently. So it would have been a great would have been a great no call for her. But ultimately, for the Hornets, that's what they need. And just to finish that thought up again for Kali Legier. All-time leading scorer, as I said, as McDonald, who's chasing Kali Legier. She'll have her fifth. He's, oh, and Kerwin takes a spill. She gets back up, though. Alina McMillan for three. It's good. Yeah, Kerwin got hit pretty good there. Her teammates need to communicate with her. It wasn't an illegal screen. Monroe was standing there pretty stationary, but Kerwin's so feisty on defense that she was so focused on trying to recover. Maybe needs to keep her head on a swivel as well, but you know, it's two people involved. The player that needs to keep their head on a swivel, but her teammates need to say, hey, heads up, get around the screen. We don't want to see anyone getting injured. Five point lead for the Thunder. Two possession game as Quackenbush bumped Crosby there. She'll be called for the foul. That's her first. So the Thunder will call a timeout, leading by five. Both of these teams are really sharp to shoot it now. We're at 65 to 60. We're probably going to get in that 80 range, and rightfully so. It's a championship game, so they really want it. And that's a good thing. It started off a little bit slow in the first quarter as we went along, and that seems to be the theme all weekend long, a feeling out of sorts, although they have played each other multiple times. Mm -hmm. but. There's that level where it, the stakes are high. It's a championship game, it's yeah. a bronze medal game. It's an opportunity to move on in the playoffs, quarterfinal, semifinal. So you get a little tight, but as you get the juices flowing, mm -hmm. that's where you go to your game. You get to the spot on the floor where you're most successful and you take those shots and take, attempt those shots and knock the shots down that you're comfortable doing. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I, I argue that many of them have been in an AUS championship, U Sport championship, a few of them have been as well. 
So they, they love this environment, right? You're not playing in the league just to play in the league. You want to win. You want to be in the championship game on Championship Sunday. And so, you know, from our side of things, we're seeing the energy. But I think on the court, you can almost go into a space where the only thing you see is what's happening on the court. You right. don't see the fans around you sometimes. And so, you know, they're playing with confidence. And right now, this is all muscle memory. This is all I've done it before. I've, you know, I know how to read the defense. I know what shots are within my range. And you can really see each of them playing within their own skill set. And Skier. Able to get downhill. She'll draw the foul on McDonald. Picks up her third personal. And Skier, a couple of important free throws coming up. Might have jinxed her a bit. <laughs> 3.37 remaining here in the third. Decision time for Parker Regan to keep his best player out there or roll the dice. And it seems like they're going to roll the dice here as McDonald will have to play with three fouls. Yeah, yeah, it's... um. For me, if I'm coaching, maybe I'll, I'll let it roll. I feel okay with, with how the score is right now. McDonald nice for shot. three. Although, if it gets under, you know, two minutes, one minute, maybe I'm going to try to bring her off the floor so she doesn't get one in the last minute of the, of the third quarter here because you don't want her playing timid going into the fourth. So it's really, as a coach, how far can you let her go into this third quarter before you sub her out so she can take a bit of a breather and McDonald finds that loose ball with the run out, she'll bank it home. But if you're the Hornets, you gotta think that you might wanna run a few sets here trying to attack McDonald, like Varney right now. She's gotta be aggressive. They'll switch on the screens. Yeah, force her to play defense, and she's you know, dealing with Beaumont down here being pretty physical, so she just has to be mindful of her position here. You don't wanna get, and you don't wanna get a, yeah, she you know, takes a, a foul tumble that you there. don't want. Yeah. A little slow to get back up to her feet. Try to draw the foul on Beaumont. Yeah. Subs she'll join late. Kerwin gets to the rim and she's fouled and she'll go to the line to shoot too. As it looks like Grace Wade will come in for McDonald's. Let's hope she's okay as she makes her way towards the bench. Might Monroe have just had will the step out. out. Brown will come in. The carousel of substitutions continue. Trying to get reinforcements out there on both sides. John Tramble and Parker Regan. Kerwin. Second one is good and Beals Ishiemi will come in for her. Smith will check in and Beaumont will sit down for the Hornets. Seven point game here for the Thunder. Barney inside the Brown on Dunker. She'll swing it over the Skier. Skier trying to get inside. She's denied Brown for three. She can make that. She can make that. You know, maybe I, I'd want to see her in the post a little bit, see if we can get her finishing. You know, a, a very, very easy layup. But again, it goes back to those players being so versatile. I remember her development at CBU under coach Fabian McKenzie. And she was knocking down threes pretty consistently by the time she finished up her fourth and fifth year. AUS MVP, all Canadian in 2018-19, two-time AUS first team. Almost getting the shooter's roll was Grace Wade and Jada Vino. In limited action, unable to put the follow-up. Good decision there by Skier. Smith, floater, good. You know, Jay's such a great, great point guard. I know she can score really well, but she's pushing the tempo. There were four defenders in front of her, and she did a great job at, you know, keeping her head on a swivel, scanning where her own teammates were, and she knew I shouldn't attack, I shouldn't look to take the shot and then she find her sh found her shooter in the corner. Might have been bumped there a little bit. I'm not even sh sure that she saw the shot go in, but did a great job at making the right decision as a point guard. And Bino will come up with the rebound. Here's Beals Ishiemi. All the way to the rim, can't finish. Skier now, back the other way. Tried to find a cut in Gascoigne, and that's tipped out of bounds by Bino. Hornets will inbound on the baseline. 
trailing by five, 55.1 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Five seems to be the number they've been hovering around. They, I think they had it down to three, but the Thunder, again, they're so disciplined and have so many options to play from, but I think that the Hornets are right where they want to be going into the fourth quarter. Maybe they can get a bucket here as they throw it at a bounce. Barney tried to get a cut and parents on the pick and roll. And now the Thunder will have an opportunity to build on their five point lead. Here's Wade. Vino gets inside. And Vino gets the shooter's roll. Yeah, Jada has a soft touch around the rim, right? She actually does quite a few floaters. Sometimes you'll see her stop in the key, almost turn her back to the basket, but she's all really, really good at being aware of where she's at, and she can just float it up over top of her defender because of her height. And if it's hard to believe that they have 70 points, and that's Jada Vino's first two. <laughs> <laughs> that is hard to believe. AUS MVP. But and I know leading score. Been, and leading <laughs> score, right? But again, you can see how the Thunder are making adjustments. I know Jada's kind of been, been in and out. I know she's balancing, I think, maybe work or school. And so, you know, sh maybe she hasn't quite found her rhythm with within this team, per se, but she's doing such a great time. It's still being a threat when she's on the floor and being okay with saying, we have so many options that we can play in that I can rely on Grace Wade knocking down a shot. I can rely on Vanessa Pickard, and it's really, really great to see. Here's Beals Ishiemi, tough shot by Beals Ishiemi. She'll bank it home. I don't know if Chanel knows the time here. Gotta put it up, and Barney's shot is blocked by Pickard. So four quarters in the books, the Thunder lead 72 to 65. So Ishiemi up to 17 points, that'll tie the point total of Haley McDonald with 17 apiece. So the Axe women leading the way doing what for they the do. Thunder. Doing what they do, right? It's just a, a nice transition from their, their AUS time into this. And for fans, like I said, I love seeing it. I think we have, have the best seats in the house up here to be able to see the different angles, the different shot attempts, the celebrations afterwards. Um, and again, I think that, I, well, I hope that all the athletes that are playing in this league are able to develop the skills that they already have, but also try new things. Maybe I want to try handling the ball a little bit more. Maybe I do want to play out on the perimeter or my back to the basket if I'm someone who's playing as a guard most of the time. Um, really, that's what we want this to be, a place where you can you can develop, you can play with different people, and then if you're someone who's continuing on in your university or college career, that you are feeling as though you're getting some reps that you need, some competition that you need, and learning from some of the players that are done their careers. So 10 minutes remaining in regulation. 72-65 is the lead for the Thunder. You see John Trammell with some last instructions to Jay Lavarney and his squad, the Hornets. What do you think the Hornets need to do to try to, I mean, multiple times they've got, would come in within five, come in three, just couldn't get at that threshold to tie it up or take the lead, but you gotta give credit to the Thunder knowing to turn it on when they need to. Yeah, I mean, obviously for me, I know that Haley, and Lizzie are gonna handle the ball the most for the Thunder, but that doesn't mean that you're not paying attention to all the other players that are out there on the court, but I would just be mindful of where's Lizzie and where's Haley for the most part. And then for the Hornets, for the Hornets, you're looking at some of the possessions that they had where they turned the ball over when they had a chance to cut the lead to three. So they have to make sure that every possession, that they make it worth something, right? They can't have any empty possessions but their defense has to be locked in right now. And that was a very important possession for the Halifax Hornets. As Jalen Skier was able to draw the foul on Haley McDonald, that's her fourth. Right, and so I think she's the gonna have to sit down. Yep. With 9.43 remaining in regulation, we got a long way to go in deciding this contest. Haley McDonald needs to be part of that equation. Skier goes one for two, and she'll throw it away and this is something that I also always looked at on and tried to emphasize to my team. After coaching high school basketball, boys basketball, there was a player out there with four fouls. Very important player, you've got the rebound. Yep. Attack that Attack. player and try to pick up that fit. So the missed opportunity there for the Hornets 
And now Grace Wade, who just checked in for Haley McDonald, mm. able to get downhill and pick up a foul on one of her opponents. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're sitting here and we're talking so much about Haley and what she does, and she's a phenomenal player. But the nice thing is that there is a little bit of comfort saying, you know what, Haley, you can take the break that you need. Mm -hmm. Look who's coming in, yeah, right? Grace Look, Wade. we've got Grace Wade coming in. We've got Marley Kerwin at the line. And so, again, it just goes back to the caliber. I think someone said it's like having a an AUS and ACA all-star match from, you know, the, the previous years and the, and the current athletes right now. So, yeah, Haley's a monster on defense – or, sorry, on offense and defense as well. But the Thunder can roll people through. So I think that Haley should feel okay – with where she's at right now and and know that the reason that she's on the bench is to make sure we can have her subbing back in with whether it's you know five minutes four minutes to go maybe Coll less collision there between parent and beals ishiyemi and they are really getting after it here and you mentioned the contact and the physicality in the first half as these officials are allowing these women to decide this championship Shana Poirier, Adam Detienne, and the crew chief, Brian States, yeah. allowing these women to compete. Yeah, and there's a fine balance, right? The officials are out there to manage the game and make sure nobody's getting hurt. That play right there was just a play on the ball between two really physical players. You could see Jazz actually almost have a reaction when, when Lizzie was going down as if to say, like, you know, <laughs> how, do, how can I catch you, right? Um, so they have so much respect for one another. They can compete, but then they can walk off the court and, and really care about each other as, as humans, as people, and that's something that I really, really enjoyed about this league, this, you know, bringing people together and celebrating their successes on and off the court. Skier will inbound on the baseline. Almost picked off there by Beals Ishiemi. It'll stay with the Hornets. Now Smith will inbound on the sidelines. Here's Skier. Trying to use the pick and roll. Smith for three. Forced it, try to chase down her own rebound. And it's last touch by the Hornets. And it will go over to the Thunder. Yeah, tough shot by Chanel. Doesn't mean she can't make it, but what you don't want to do, like I said, is have maybe not the best shot attempt when you could have maybe had a layup or a simple bucket around the rim. Um, it just, again, shifts the momentum back into, into the Thunder's uh, direction. Here's Langell. She'll dump it inside to Quackenbush. Quackenbush trying to go around Gascoigne, and Gascoigne with the rejection. But she stepped on the end line. Outstanding 1v1 defense on the ball by Gascoigne. And you know what? That's pretty common of, of Clara Gascoigne. Her ability to block shots without fouling is really, really impressive, right? She had her hands generally straight up and just kind of tucked it in and brought it down. And like you said, she landed landed on the, the end of the bounds line there. But I, I am noting over in the stands to our right, what are they called, those fat heads? There's a giant cutout face of Clara Gascoigne from her teammates. I think uh, Chloe Wilson over there has one in her, in her hands there. Gascoigne, the Smith. Now that's the that's shot. That's the she shot. Yeah. She puts it down, caught it in rhythm, wide open jumper, all by the dribble penetration and kick out by Gascoigne. Lead down the four. Thunder looking for a response. Langell can't get the space on Parent. Outstanding defense there by Jasmine. Yep, held her position. Smith now tough on shot. Ishiemi, and that is a tough assignment. Trying to back down the bigger forward and Beals Ishiemi. Kerwin, she'll look, she'll blow by Varney. Langell for three. She can shoot that. She was great pick and pop when she was uh, playing the St. Mary's. Count it and one as Kerwin picking up that offense coming off the bench for yeah. Haley McDonald. Yeah, you know, Marley, I, I talked about her in the first half. I had a chance to coach her um, the 2017 Canada Games. Jalen Skier and I were the, uh, the coaching staff along with Scott Monroe there. And Marley was just a fantastic person. And again, defense was her, her specialty. You can see it out here on the floor. No one wants them guarding her. Uh, or no one wants her guarding them. And so to see her finding her way offensively, I'm just really, really happy for the way that her career has really um, has gone, to be honest. 
Kerwin able to finish the end one. She's got seven. Turnover as Ballas, who's checked back for the Hornets, can't handle that entry. Pickard for three. Batted around as Ballas comes up with the rebound. Smith now will bring it over the timeline. Here's Smith trying to go downhill. Beaumont thought about the three, draws the double. Ballas. Lots of time, lots of time. Nice, nice Euro move. step and banks it home. That's the length by Fallis coming in, you know, in her favor and a smaller player in Wade. Wade, though, says, okay, you got one on me down the other end. I'll knock it down and get some spacing on the pull-up on the other end. Yes, you know, the Hornets did a great job. Cat gets to the rim and finishes. We should be picking up and we should know exactly where where the ball handler is, and Grace Wade has actually been very, very good at getting into the mid-range and knocking down the jumper as she did. So, you know, the Hornets, you you make the shot, you have to flip the switch in your head and go immediately to defense. You can't give up a really easy bucket at the other end. Good minutes off the bench for Parker Regan, and as Marley Kerwin will sit down, Haley McDonald will come back with 6.36 remaining in regulation. Playing with four fouls, and there's her battery mate, Jada Vino, applying that defensive pressure and forcing the turnover. Wade now. McDonald, closely guarded by McMillan, draws the double, and Dunker banks it home. Smart move there yeah. by McDonald yeah. on the pick and roll, and John Trammell calls a timeout, and he'll want to talk it over as the lead goes back up to nine. Yeah, absolutely. I'd probably be taking a timeout there as well. Too easy of a look, right? Haley's court vision is impeccable. She finds Dunker, knocks down a really easy jumper that's well within her range and well within her skill set. So right timeout, I think, really they need to focus on getting a good look offensively. But again, it's not to say that they're not getting clean looks. It's the defensive end. Miscommunications, not stopping the ball early in transition. If you're not going to do that, you're not going to win the game. So timeout called by the Hornets, trying to regroup here. Nice little run, a 7-0 run for the Thunder. They push this lead back up to nine, and the Hornets, though, they've been there in striking distance, they've been back and forth at one point in the first half. The Thunder did have a comfortable 14-point lead, but the compete level and the fight and the push by the Hornets pay dividends as they continue to fight back and forth here and this might come down to the last shot yeah absolutely i think um you know you're looking at the hornets and i said what they couldn't get past that like five three point deficit if they get the lead if they can get the lead that puts a lot of pressure on the thunder who i'm not sure have been behind ever for the entire season right so we have actually haven't seen them play from behind i do think that they'd probably be able to work things out but again we don't know, so for me, the Hornets need to figure out how to keep chipping away. Keep chipping away like Skier does there, knocking down that shot, but keep putting pressure on them. All you have to do is get just a one point lead and then let's see what happens. Skier with the pull up coming out of the timeout, just what the doctor ordered. McDonald for three, Vito with the rebound. Second chance coming up here for the Thunder. Tough entry pass by Wade to Dunker. Dunker with some space, step through, left hand, nothing Stop but you. money. He's able to wait out the defender and finish with the left hand. Here's McMillan. Skier for three. Might have been deflected. Last touch by Macias. Good close out there by Grace Wade to disrupt that three ball by Skier. Here's Vino. Vino gets inside. Dunker. McDonald, baseline. Oh. Vino, tough shot. And Beaumont comes down with the rebound. Couple of key subs coming in for both teams here. See Lizzie at the table. She just changes the entire pace of the game. Gas going on the other side. 
a nice scoring threat, but again, challenges people at the rim, which I think can help help them out defensively. Tough Hornets shot get there a by Fallis. That was a good look. Fallis yeah. just couldn't get it up and over Dunker. Here's Vito to wait on the baseline to Dunker. Dunker again. Dunker another there. rebound. McDonald for three. That won't go, and the Hornets finally able to grab the rebound as Macias able to balk out Picker. Here's Skier on the baseline. Paulus, and that's a nice looking stroke there. Yes, and I gotta say, her parents love it. I met her mom at halftime after uh, chatting a little bit about, about them flying in. And I saw them, you know, raise their hands when she made that bucket. Skier, blow by. Banks it home, beautiful move right there. by Jalen Skier. Back to five. As she throws Pickard at the three-point line. Here's Pickard off the roll. Flips it up, can't get it to go down. Macias now. She'll bring it over the timeline. Skier. Back door to Fallis. Banks it Excellent home. Pass. And Time the out. Thunder will call a timeout. And the lead's down the three. Game management, the chess match between Parker Regan and John Tramble. Yep. The lead went up to nine. John Tramble said, hey, I got to call a timeout here. Draw up a few things. Out of the timeout, they got exactly what they needed. Yep. Jalen Skier hit a big shot. And then the last few possessions, they were able to get what they wanted on offense and now it's Parker Regan's time to make that game manage ma yeah. and make the adjustment. Yeah, and you know what? You know, any any coach that's watching uh, or, you know, in the stands, you can sense when there's gonna be a timeout, right? I, I think I, you know, mumbled under my under my breath there, like, time, like timeout's coming. You could just feel it. And I think, you know, we really have to give kudos and credit to the coaches that are on both teams and on all six teams really who are really really knowledgeable and working with really smart women so there's a bit of a management of like the knowledge that you bring as a coach and also taking in the knowledge from the athletes that you have on the court but going back to the possessions that you saw here with um, the Halifax Hornets the ball has to be in the point guard's hands Jalen is making decisions at the offensive end of the floor that are setting either herself or her teammates up for success when you have a great point guard, you can probably be a pretty successful team. So I'm looking out there, I'm seeing Jalen and, and uh, Alina McMillan out there. I feel like the Hornets are trying to make sure they have two really good ball handlers and perimeter players to close out this game and maybe come away with a win and the first loss for the Halifax Thunder. Baseline drives not there for Langell. Full court pressure being applied out of that timeout by the Hornets. McMillan almost turned it over. McMillan thought about trying to put it up from three. She'll get inside. Here's Beaumont. Beaumont's bumped. And Beaumont will go to the line to shoot two to cut the lead to one. Yeah, big shots here. Right now, if you're an athlete stepping up to the line, it's all muscle memory, right? When they start overthinking it, that's when the shot looks a little bit off. So let's see what she does here. Couple very important free throws as Beaumont, a little strong with the first. It went to a complete silence here <laughs> at the Homburg <laughs> Center. You can cut the tension with a knife. Beaumont, there empty trip, misses both. So a crucial opportunity there. Goes by the wayside for the Hornets. Bino, back out to Ishiyemi for three. Down. Can't get it to go, and McMillan comes up with it. She's knocked through the floor by Langell. And that'll be the fourth team foul on the Thunder. So the next one, they'll be in the penalty. So another opportunity, one possession game. Chance to tie. We'll get within one, McMillan. That won't go. That all the way to luck. the rim. McDonald trying to ward off McMillan, and in that, Gascoigne able to rip it away. Skier. Skier trying to get downhill. McMillan 
McMillan with the blow by. Left hand, count it, and one. A line of McMillan. The bench loves it. The fans love it. 2-0-2 remaining in a line of McMillan. Taking McDonald off the bounce, and that's the strategy. Big shot Haley here. Haley McDonald's got four fouls. She can't be aggressive. She got a line of McMillan who's very good. 1v1. Went to her bag and got right to the rim. Drew the foul on another opponent for the Thunder. Now she'll go to the line to try to tie this one up. Yeah, and you know, the possession before she went the same side, missed the shot or missed the layup, but then went back to it again, right? It's that confidence that you know every athlete needs to have. She's made those layups before. She's made some tough finishes, so I wish she had to knock down that free throw to tie it up, but let's see if they can stay disciplined on defense. They're right where they want to be. They have not been this close to the Thunder in their regular season games. Skier with the hustle. A scramble for the loose ball. Cut. Gascoigne able to get to it. And the intensity starting to heat up. <laughs> Under <laughs> two to go. A chance to take the lead for the Hornets. Beaumont for three. Big shot. Oh, and that's off the side of the backboard. Beaumont gets it back. Bump to the floor. And the Thunder will come back the other way. Skier steps in front of Kerwin. And that'll be a blocking foul on Skier. Listen, that's tough. This is why I don't want to be an official, right? No matter what call he made there, no matter what call Adam Detien made there, someone in the stands is not going to be happy with it. I thought Jalen Skier had pretty good position there. And Marley was going pretty fast downhill. But again, I don't have the angle. Maybe Marley did hit, uh, hit Jalen on the side, right? And so it has to be right in the chest. Fans didn't like the call, though. 118 remaining in regulation. One point game, and that's knocked out of bounds by Skier. As the Hornets feels this to stop. The Hornets need to stop here, and then they have to get a really clean look at the other end. I thought that they took a two off balance shots in their previous possession because they really wanted the score. But be patient. Be patient and trust yourself. You don't need to rush to try to take the lead. A steal by Beaumont. Another opportunity here for the Hornets to take the lead. Beaumont can't handle that pass from Gascoigne. So 59.1 remaining. She was going before she had possession, or before she had possession of the ball, right? You have to catch on balance. And again, you don't have to rush. Think through it. You've had two great possessions, and you didn't get a good look at the rim. McDonald's, Kerwin on the drive. Pickard for three. That's no good. Beals Ishiemi crashing the boards. Can't come up with the rebound. Another opportunity here for the Hornets to take the lead. One possession game. Shot clock and game clock, and that's a big foul. It's on McDonald. Dunker's Dunker trying to wants get it. it. Let's see who Shana Poirier gives it to. And it appears to be, and it might be on McDonald. If you're a player, you don't go to the bench to, until the official says it's you. Yeah, and it, it is. is on McDonald. So Haley McDonald's afternoon is over. She'll finish up with 17 points in this championship final. 82-81, 28.2 remaining in regulation. And this has to be one of the biggest moments in Jalen Skier's <laughs> basketball career. Listen, Free I'm friends throws, with Jay. Time out. She knows I will, I will heckle her if she does not make both these shots. So uh, I, I trusted her. I trust every athlete out there. But you know, when you when you know someone a little bit better, you you got to look at her and have been after her about the glasses and like, how come you don't have goggles on the glasses? What's up with that? But you know, they're on her face, so I assume she's gonna knock down two free throws. So Skier with an opportunity to tie or take the lead. Ice water in her veins as the Hornets take the lead. 83 to 82. Thunder now. Here's Kerwin. Kerwin gets inside, forces it up. Dunker and Skier in a battle for the loose ball. But the possession arrow will favor the Thunder. 17.1 remaining regulation. 
As Parker Regan will call a timeout. Don't ask me what I would do. And we <laughs> talked about it. I told you it might come down to the last shot. Yep. And this is a situation where the Thunder have not been in. All right. What did all I say? You just have to get one point, one point ahead. And now we get to see how the Thunder handles this pressure. So timeout called by the Thunder. 17.1 remaining. 13 on the shot clock. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know you what? Can't, you can't even. You can't write this. No, it's you a championship can't. final. It's a we knew it. We knew it. <laughs> we knew it was going to be and it will come down to the last possession. And it was the matchup, the anticipated matchup that everybody wanted. And this is it. Yeah. Coming down to one possession yeah. for the Legacy Cup. Who do you give the ball to if you're the Thunder? Cool. Putting you on the spot. Uh, who do I give the ball to? I might go to Abby. I'm looking at the time. I feel like I'd want something at the rim. It's going to give me a nice second chance opportunity. But also Lizzie, right? I think I might start her away from the basket and send her downhill because she's so hard to step in front of. Those would be the two people that I'm probably looking at because they're going to go hard to the rim. Grace Wade will inbound. Looking, looking. Wade gets it back. Tie up and the possession arrow will favor the Hornets. So not what they wanted coming out of the timeout. No. The most difficult part about that is, first of all, you've got to get the ball in bounds and gain possession. Yeah, and you know, you're running your, your end at a bounds play, and I know Coach is over there. He probably drew up something great. The Hornets, you know, we talk about the pressure that's on the Thunder to make a good decision offensively. The pressure is also on the Hornets to be sound defensively, and they did a great job communicating from what I could see. At that point with the Thunder, Yes, you drew up the options of what you wanted to see, but if you don't have what was originally drawn up, you don't have to force it, right? You can lob it up over top to one of your guards and still have roughly, I think it was about 17 seconds left to make a decision. So it was a bit of a forced pass, unfortunately. Um, but again, there's lots of time. I'm anticipating we're going into the foul game. The Hornets have already missed a couple of crucial foul shots, right? We look at, uh, I think Beaumont had missed two early and you and I were like, Ugh, you know, you got to make those ones. but. We shall see what happens out here. Um, I, I would guess that foul game, got to make sure you have it in the right free throw shooter's hands. And then Thunder has to recognize that even if, even if the Hornets score two, you have a chance to tie the game. You don't have to panic. The very important, all important inbound. 13.9 remaining in regulation. And they put uh, Abby on the ball too, right? To try to take away Skier's vision. Got to get it in, don't have to shoot. McMillan gets it, and she's quickly fouled by Beals Ishiemi. And Alina McMillan can go to the line to shoot a pair here. Very important free throws. One point game and try to get it to three. Makes the first. Big shot. Knocks down a second, three point game. Full court pressure being applied by the Hornets. Here's Kerwin. Grace Wade decides to go in all the way, banks it home with 6.7 remaining. One point game now. Inbound, almost stolen, last touch by Beals Ishiemi, 5.3 now remaining. Yeah, there could have been a foul call in there. Um, you know, Lizzie, Lizzie did go hard to the ball there. Happy everyone came up okay. Again, foul game. I think Grace did a great job at scoring quickly there. I almost said, does she know it's a three point possession, but she went so fast that I think she was well aware that we're, you know, six left in the game. Let's try to get a steal on the inbound. If not, we foul again. So John Trammell calls timeout. The ball will advance. advance, so we'll have another inbound. That's a smart move, and you could see the coach. We talked about leaders out there. We talked about, you know, these teams have a lot of captains that have been in these situations before, and as that inbound came and it went the way of the Hornets, you could see Jalen Skier deploring <laughs> John Trammell to call, call time, time out, out, signaling, here, we need a time out, we yeah. need to talk things over and it's to their advantage to advance the basketball ahead and have it in the 
in the, the front, front court, court instead of the back court with this time left. If they turn it over, the Thunder will have to have, you know, not much time to go back the, the other way, the, court, the length of the court. 5.3. Yeah, to either win it at the buzzer. So very important inbound once again. Skier will inbound, Dunker will defend. McMillan gets it, quickly fouled, and Dunker will commit the foul. Alina will step back up to the three throw line to, to check her mental right now. She's got to be a little nervous, but she Not knocked down the previous two. two. See if she's got ice water in her veins. Nothing but nets. Cool, calm, collective is the line of McMillan. Second one, nothing but net as well. Wade heaves it for the tie. And that'll do it. The Halifax Hornets are champions. They will capture the Legacy Cup. They win it 87 to 84. Wow. What a great basketball game. Loving the celebration. And you gotta hand it to both teams, right? That was an incredible game, start to finish. If you look over at the Thunder, Haley McDonald is talking to her teammates, and she was somebody that subbed, that not subbed out, fouled out early, but she's such a true, a true athlete, a true player. I'm sure they wanted to win, but you could see how she brought her team together and talked to them right away, and that's leadership. So the champions, the Halifax Hornets, and we talked about it, the third time is always the toughest time to beat a team three times in a row consecutively in the same calendar year. It took the third time, the one that mattered for the Hornets to get over the threshold. Yep. So congratulations to both of these teams. Congratulations to all six of these teams in the MWBA. Yep. And uh, it was a fantastic season and one that you need to be delighted for. And um, I'm thrilled. I'm gonna drop this mic, and I get to sprint down there to uh, dish out some awards to some people. So uh, that's how it's been working That's all how it is, weekend. but to everyone listening, um, thank you to everybody listening, to everybody that's in the stands um, for the support that you've given the league, the athletes. It's really unbelievable. They're getting a standing ovation here from the Hornets, and so, uh, we hope to continue this on. I hope we left a legacy and everyone watching and supporting us, you were part of that legacy as well. So the Hornets celebrating, the league celebrating as Deja stepped away. She'll present some awards, player of the game, All-Stars and tournament MVP as well. The Legacy Cup will be presented to the Halifax Hornets. All the action here on Maritime Athletic Profiles. From start to finish, the leaders in live stream sports here in Atlanta, Canada. As you can see the Legacy Cup being carted out in front of the scorer's table. The jubilation being displayed by the Halifax Hornets. Uh, Tough battle, trailed most of the game, but got the job done when it mattered down the stretch. So we'll just wait for the Awards presentation. As they'll be announced momentarily here.
So the league all-stars being presented first. McMillan named the league all-star was clutched down the stretch here in his championship finals couple big three throws four to be exact and she'll continue her campaign with St. Mary's University and we'll go to the tournament MVP Jay Linskier naming the tournament MVP. The former Cape Breton University caper, now head coach of Armbre Academy, his girls program, as well as basketball in Nova Scotia. As you can hear, an MVP from her teammates and the crowd here at the Hamburg Center. Much deserved for Jalen Skier. And the most valuable player award will be given out. So the league MVP awarded to Haley McDonald of the Halifax Thunder. McDonald not getting the result that she probably wanted in this final. And an outstanding season here for the Thunder. She'll take home that trophy. Thank you so much, fans, for coming on out and supporting the Maritime Women's Basketball Association. You'll now have the presentation of the gold medals. So the gold medals will be presented to the Hornets. As assistant coach Janice King will help Tasia McKenna and handing them out. McMillan. Name League All Star. Number seven, Chanel Smith. Chanel Smith. Former Katie Axe woman. Leading scorer, Jayla Varney. Holland College. Mount Royal University, outstanding rookie of the year in the Canada West. Uh, excuse me, all rookie team in 2015. Aaliyah Frazier, St. Francis Xavier University. Corvitz, Mount St. Vincent University. Jalen Skier, Cape Breton University. Alicia McNeil. Mount St. Vincent University. Ariana Macias, St. Mary's University. Lucy Beaumont, St. Mary's University. Kathleen Paulus, University of Ottawa. And Toronto Metropolitan University. Kaylin Crosby, Dalhousie University. Clara Gascoigne, St. Mary's University. Madison Monroe, Cape Breton University. Number 23, Leah Martin. Leah Martin, Dalhousie University. Number 24, Hannah Brown. Hannah Brown, Cape Breton University. And number 25, Jasmine Perry. Jasmine Perrin. Acadia University. Those are the universities that these women represent current and former standouts for those programs. And we'd like to congratulate as coaching staff of the Hornets, head coach John Tramble. Head coach John Tramble, John Tramble Jonathan Janice Bell, King, Provo, Jonathan Bell, Denisha Provo. And and Nark forwards, well represented 
in basketball here in Nova Scotia. As they'll take home their gold medals. Now they will lift and hoist the MWBA Legacy Cup. And there it is. That's what they fought for for two months. Blood, sweat, maybe some tears down the road through some injuries, some adjustments in work schedules and career schedules. The Halifax Hornets champions of the MWBA. So I'll step aside, I'll try to get a few interviews courtside, but I'd like to thank all of my broadcast partners this weekend. Helping out, pitching in, Joe Wells, Jen McKenzie, Tasia McKenna, Rachel Ross, my producer, Clark Swim, as always. I'm Vince Williams saying thank you for watching all season long here on Maritime Athletic Profiles. The MWBA, it is fantastic. So long for now from the booth. But make sure you watch at Maritime Athletic Profiles next season as we pick up the action all over again. So thank you once again for watching this league grow as we go forward.
Did you just you? talking. We're having a conversation. Okay. The camera's up there. Okay, so I'm not looking here. Anything. No, just, okay. look, just look at me and okay. we'll just have it there. Sure. Joined now by Jasmine, parents of the Halifax Hornets. Jasmine, a lot of emotions right now. Yeah. How are you feeling after getting the W? I just said to the girls on the bench, I'm feeling every possible emotion. Excited, so proud of our team. We worked for that win. We've been working all season. I'm just proud. I feel so proud of us, yeah. Now, you came into this game with some adversity. You knew you played them twice. They beat you twice. In sports, it's always hard to, to beat a team three times in a row mm -hmm. in a calendar year. Yes. What was the mindset coming into this game for your teammates and yourself? For us as a team, our mindset was just, we haven't played our best game yet. We knew that we hadn't played our best game. We knew that every time out, we were getting a little bit better. Our chemistry was building. It's a short season. So you got to work very hard on building that team chemistry every time out. And we've been focused on that all season long, getting a little bit better every game. And we knew that we were going to play our best game of the whole season tonight. And we did that. And what does this win, winning this championship, do for your program? I think not only the program, but the league, I think it shows folks how serious this league is. This league is high, high level basketball and women are ready to play basketball at a high level. And I think it just shows the fans. I think it shows everybody watching that this league is going to just continue to grow and be amazing. Fantastic. Congratulations, parents. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jasmine Parent of the Halifax Hornets, they win it. A great win for them. And they'll look to do it next year. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. So here now with the tournament MVP from Cape Breton University. I'm a good credit to Cape Breton University and their program and Fabian McKenzie, Jalen Skier. Your emotions are high right now. How are you feeling after this win? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. I have a couple. You mentioned CBU. I feel like uh, winning this one with Maddie and, uh, and Hannah, we won together at Cape Breton, so that was awesome. And then there's a bunch of them. I, I play with Chanel my whole life. And we've never won a championship together other than at the Y. So uh, I think we're just loving it. Feel, yeah, feeling great. Feeling great. It was fun. And I asked the same question to Jasmine in regards to coming in this game. You were defeated twice by this team. This team was a juggernaut, the Halifax yeah. Thunder. Yeah. It's hard to beat a team three times in a row in yeah. a calendar year. What was the mindset for yourself along with your teammates? Honestly, just that. Just that. We, we felt that... You know, we haven't showed our best in the kind of basketball we like to play. The team basketball, attacking the rim, um, and just really spacing it out and everybody getting some love um, against them. We struggled with that, and today I felt uh, we really put that away. I thought we moved the ball well, we spaced the floor, we got to the rim, and we had high energy the whole way, and we, we weathered those little storms. Um, so that was really fun. And what does this win do for your program, the league, and what will be your message for the fans and the young players out there that get a chance to watch you guys as you guys go forward? Honestly, I just think in general for, for young kids watching, high school players watching, even in early university, is watching how fun it is. It, it's really fun, but it's high level, high compete level. We're great friends with people on the other teams. Um, so the message is just to have fun and, and honestly never stop competing. Yeah. Congratulations, Jalen. Soak you. it up. Yeah. You deserve it. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks so much. Jalen Skier, tournament MVP, champion now of the MWBA. Yeah.